The topic of processed food is incredibly interesting from both a human and a pet health perspective. We're beginning to understand more and more about the negative impacts of consuming a large amount of ultra processed foods on human health. How does this relate to commercial pet food and the health of our pets? Really, is this meal the same as this one? We could spend days on the topic of processed foods. So I thought I would go through it in more easily digestible chunks with a series of videos. For this first video, I'm going to focus on two aspects of processing that garner a lot of attention. What nutrients are lost when we process food and what negative compounds are created through processing. So let's start briefly on what is a processed food. A processed food is any food item that has been altered in any way from its natural form. The NOVA classification system splits food based on how processed they are. The start, for example, would be an unprocessed or natural food. An example of this would be this apple. The next level is minimally processed, so that would be the prepackaged apple slices with no additional additives. Then you have processed foods, such as the apple being made into applesauce by adding water and then cooking it. And the last category is ultra processed, where the applesauce is now sweetened with high fructose corn syrup or an artificial sweetener. Foods that fall into this category are things like chips, instant soups, cakes, chocolate, candies, energy drinks, things like that. Things that are really far away from the original food that they started off as. Now, how does this compare to kibbles and canned food? Well, traditional kibbles are made through an extrusion process where a dough is formed from powdered meats, oils, grains, vegetables, and a vitamin mineral mix. And this is cooked at a temperature between 80 to 200 Celsius for somewhere between a few seconds to a few minutes. After cooking, the dough is pushed through a small hole and cut into shapes. From there, it's dried in a temperature that can reach up to about 150 degrees Celsius. After this, the dried kibbles are enrobed with fats and palatins before it is packaged. For canned food, fresh meat is mixed with fats, vegetables, grains, and water. And this mixture is heated between somewhere between 25 to 85 degrees Celsius, which starts to gelatinize the starch, making them more digestible. This is a process that also starts to denature proteins. After the packages are filled with this mixture, they undergo sterilization. How long is under heat for depends on the temperature that it's heated to. But in general, heating it to about 120 degrees Celsius for several minutes is the most common. Just as a comparison, we tend to bake our foods in ovens that have a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius or so. So, are these processed foods? Yes. Are they ultra-processed foods? Yes, according to that definition. Are they the same as this fast food meal? Well, yes and no. The biggest issue with ultra-processed food is that they provide little nutritive value. The nutrients are stripped away as the food becomes more and more processed. Now, kibble and canned food, if they are complete and balanced, they actually have added vitamins and minerals to ensure that they do meet the minimum requirements for dogs and cats. Now, the topic of whether added synthetic nutrients are less ideal than the natural counterparts is another topic for another day. But the main point here is that while nutrients are lost in the process of being extruded or sterilized, manufacturers do account for this in their formulation, so that the final product has a complete certain, certain profile. Another concern with processed foods is that they contain something called processed contaminants. Now, these are chemical compounds that are created when we're heating, drying, or fermenting foods. These compounds can occur even at home when we cook our food, and a classic example of this is toast. Now, toast is super tasty because heating the bread creates a change in texture and caramelization, which is due to something called a Maillard reaction. Now, while it's tasty, this also creates unwanted compounds such as acrylamide. Acrylamide is formed between the sugars and an amino acid aspargine, and eating lots of it has been shown to cause cancers and other undesirable effects in lab animals. Now, acrylamide forms more from plant-based ingredients when in, when in comparison to animal-based ones. Now, there is no safe dose of acrylamide, and instead, human health organizations have suggested to potentially create a level that's been suggested to cause cancers and neurological changes, which starts at 0.17 milligrams per kilogram per day. 
And if you do the math, that is like eating 17,000 pieces of toast or two and a half kilos of potato chips a day. That sounds crazy, right? But remember, there is no actual safe amount of acrylamide. That is just simply the amount that we think causes an issue. There are a small number of studies examining the levels of acrylamide in pet food, but kibbles have been found to have a higher concentration than wet food. And what they found was a range of somewhere between 15 to 360 nanograms per gram of food. Now, assuming a 20 kilogram dog eats about 260 grams of food a day, that would mean they would eat about 95 micrograms of acrylamide a day. Now, this is far below what is believed to cause cancers in other species. So where does that leave us? It's clear by definition that kibbles and canned food are the ultra processed foods of the pet world. Are they just as unhealthy as the cakes, cookies, and fast foods that are also in this category? Definitely not, because these products are at least fortified with vitamins and minerals. Does processing create unwanted chemical compounds? Definitely yes, but the levels found in these products are below what we think are the levels needed to cause disease. But just to reiterate, there is no safe level though. So if you wanna reduce the amount of acrylamide your pet is eating, adding in wet food or fresh food, that you make at home or get commercially would help. Thank you so much guys for watching. You can find out more in our blog, which has links to the studies I referenced today. There's also a lot more on this topic. So please stay tuned for the second part of the series, exploring processed foods for our pets. We'll see you next time.